Amley told Teen Girl is condition irreversible, then second doctor steps in. Medicine and science has changed so much over the last few years, diseases that were once incurable are now curable. Science and medicine is the most important fields regarding the knowledge and preservation of our health. They are, nevertheless, imperfect at times. Furthermore, it appears that factors beyond human control can sometimes surpass the constraints of human action and understanding. Maybe those forces can teach us a thing or two about modesty. This story appears to be one of such instances. At 14 years old, Taylor Hale had few things to worry about in life. She was an excellent student, she loved spending time with her family, and she had a close-knit group of friends. On one sunny day in Waukee, Iowa, Taylor and her friends decided to go and support a local football team. It was a beautiful day, and the group was ecstatic to celebrate the beginning of summer vacation. Nobody anticipated for anything to go wrong. A few of Taylor's friends played in the football team, so the stakes were high. This was an important football game for Taylor's friends, as it would be the deciding factor of whether they're moving to the next round in the league or not. Taylor also had a fondness for one of the football players. He sat next to her in math class, and he made her stomach full of butterflies. Therefore, Taylor had more than one reason to be excited for this game. Taylor and her friends were cheering as the football team won the game. They were progressing to the next round. They knew they had to celebrate. They were all standing on the field, congratulating the football players when someone suggested that they should go eat celebratory pizza. Taylor knew this would be an opportunity to spend time with her crush, so she eagerly agreed. If only she had known how drastically her life was going to change. However, the player Taylor had a crush on informed the group that he was exhausted and had a big test to study for. Everyone tried to convince him to stay, but to no avail. He gathered his things and climbed into his car. Taylor and a friend were so enthralled by the thrill and excitement of the day that they did something they would regret for years to come. In an attempt to stop their friend from leaving, they decided to sit on the hood of his car. They wanted to celebrate with him, so they needed to find a way to prevent him from leaving. However, he was unaware of the fact that he put his car in reverse. The vehicle began to move, and the two girls were thrown off it. Her friend only sustained minor injuries, however Taylor wasn't as lucky. She hit her head against the floor and lost consciousness. They acted quickly and dialed 911 as soon as they noticed she was not responding. They also informed her parents. Taylor went to the hospital a few minutes later. The doctors were assessing Taylor while everyone anxiously waited in the waiting room. Her friends were trying to figure out what they could have done to prevent this and her parents were worried sick. Finally, the doctors emerged to share their findings with the family. The doctors explained that they decided to put Taylor in an induced coma to aid her brain's healing. However, the outlook remained dismal. There was little that could be done at the time because she was suffering from a severe brain hemorrhaging. The doctors declared Taylor brain dead and that the family needed to decide what to do with her organs as well as start the funeral planning. But that's when a fortuitous man intervened. The man who intervened, Jeff Stickle, was a close family friend. He was a committed Christian and a chiropractor. He was informed of Taylor's situation and he knew he had to come pray for her. That's exactly what he did. He walked into Taylor's room and laid his hands on her head, pleading with God to spare her life. Later that day, the doctors took Taylor off life support. But something incredible happened. She didn't flatline. She started breathing on her own. Quickly, the doctors put her back on life support. Nobody expected any improvement to happen, but it was actually happening. Could Taylor come back to her consciousness? After a few hours, Taylor started showing signs of improvement. Her brain activity picked up, her eyelids moved and she was trying to talk. Nobody could believe what was happening. Some hours ago, the doctors had said that the chances of her coming out of her coma were slim to none. But this seemed almost like a miracle. Finally, Taylor got out of her coma. But her recovery didn't end there, she spent the following months relearning how to do everything, from walking to talking. Eventually, she was completely healthy and functioning again. All right after Jeff Stickle's prayer. Maybe even thanks to it. That's what Taylor and her family seemed to believe. Chuck, Taylor's dad, told the papers, it was the hand of God at work. That's the only thing that can explain it. What Taylor herself said was this, I'm always thankful to all the doctors and nurses and therapists who helped me get better, but God did most of the saving. After that, Taylor recovered most of her cognitive abilities, with only some impairments in long-term memory. But she was able to resume her studies. She went back to school and started working hard to get into the bachelor's degree of her dreams, event management.